friends welcome back to my channel i know it's been long that i have not uploaded um a video for quite a long time the reason being this video will give you the answer for it and uh, today i have come up with a dozens of interview questions which is completely based on the market survey and today's video the sets of uh, structural interview questions are completely based on the market survey so let's get into it that what sort of interview questions you might face being an structural engineer and if you have still not subscribed to my channel you should do it because it's completely free and every week i make a hot content like what sort of jobs available internships and how you can apply and so many hot topics relevant to aerospace and job career so what are you waiting for let's get started so before getting started i'm having a sets of questions in my hand so those things i'm going to discuss with you and which is completely from the market survey provided by the experienced those are currently working as an structural engineer the some are like a um, structural analyst some are principal stress engineer even a production manager to be on those profiles you should have a proficiency on certain subjects engineering mechanics manufacturing productions uh, material science strength of material aircraft structures being an aerospace um uh, engineer or aeronautical engineer you should have a good grip on structures 1 and structures 2 finite element method vibrations and composite manufacturing and materials these are the core subjects where you should have a very good hold on it to be as a structural engineer and let me tell you one more interesting thing do you know in india if you are looking for a job 90% of the job scopes are on the structural engineer so you must be proud if you are having a domain for a structural engineer yes you caught me right that 90% of the job scope is only for a structural engineer and let me tell you one more thing this is a domain where aerospace aeronautical mechanical civil engineering students can also apply okay so without uh, wasting much of the time let's begin the session with some important discussion and yes one more thing uh, this video might get bit lengthy so don't skip watch uh, till the end because uh, here we i'm going to provide you detailed information the first question is uh being an structural engineer that what sort of solver do you prefer or what sort of solver are you are uh, expertise in so uh, there are several softwares like abacus uh, fea tool physics matlab ansys cosmol elastina nastran then uh, sim scale so they are frequently used in most of the companies so now they will they want to know that how much knowledge you have in terms of softwares now all the question starts with that how far you are comfortable with the softwares and when and where you are going to implement and how you are going to implement it moreover the moral of the all the interview questions are relevant to that now let me get into the conceptual and what sort of questions they directly ask you now in one interview question they have asked to connect a shaft between turbine and compressor which will you prefer hollow or solid one and if hollow why and if solid why just take a thought of a one second of the simple question obviously based on the requirement if the strength to weight ratio gives a priority so obviously when you're connecting the turbine and compressor this is a topic where both the aerospace aeronautical and mechanical students or engineers deals with these things so if the based on the weight becomes a priority obviously you will be choosing the hollow shaft so the simple questions lies on the concept so obviously not only the strength 
over the weight it also plays a vital role on hollow shaft are much better in terms of torsional load as compared with the solid shaft so this is two major reasons that why the hollow shafts will be preferable right let's move to the next question they have asked one of the application based question a workshop man are asked to transform i section into few pieces of channel section that means c section considering the dimensions of the flanges and the webs remains unchanged that means the flanges and rear web are not getting changed but the i is converting into c section now if we ask you to calculate the young's modulus of the material after being manufactured from i to c so what will be the young's modulus for that particular section for a single section just again take a time to think young's modulus is a um, is a modulus or the constant which completely depends on the material if you are using copper if you are using mild steel it's completely it's none of the thing deals with the manufacturing or transformation of the shape which is has been asked like i to uh, c section or i to channel section so just a simple conceptual thing that they have asked over here all right again the same thing two beam a and b have the same cross section and are made up of same material but the length of the beam a is twice that of the b then for a given force what will be the strain of both the beams now they have given two beams and everything is same except their length now again it applies the same as if the material is same if the force applied is same so obviously in a natural process their strain is also going to be the same because strain explains a ch change in length by the original length so again it comes a uh, thought of about a concept and if you want to develop the same concept numerically obviously you will get the same result applying the hooke's law right which is within the elastic limit so there also you are going to get the same answer the strain for the beam a and strain for the beam b is going to be the same moving to the next question very interesting question which is more elastic is it a steel or a rubber and why again the answer lies the same as you know um a graph between the strain and the stress for this particular material called uh, rubber and steel obviously the answer is for the steel this is specially this questions are asked for civil engineering students and aerospace students uh, they have given a channel section they have mentioned that the both the channel sections of same dimensions but the question they have asked is what will be their uh, shear center location for both the material the cross section is same c sections they have given the dimensions 5 10 5 they have given and they have asked that what will be the change in their um, uh, shear center shear center is a point at which there will be a bending but no twisting so again it comes to the conceptual thing the shear center locations is completely depends on the cross section if both the cross section is same it doesn't depends what material it is if both the section of same cross section same dimensions the shear center is going to be the same location now if you have done a project something related to by using softwares so definitely you can expect this kind of question which is the best finite element method software that are being used and which you have implemented in your project 
so as per my survey most of my students and my friends or whatever right now nastrin patron and cis cosmosols are used so based on your answer which you are defining or which you are telling or which you are comfortable at the questions are going to be from there so um there was a question that if you are asked to analyze a buckling of thin plate which method or solver will you choose this is uh, i can say uh, based on the solver this is uh, one of the common questions that frequently uh, the expertise the panel members are asked you should have a knowledge about implicit method and explicit method when to be used explicit and when to be used implicit so basically time dependency is not an important factor in case of buckling of thin plates so obviously which comes or you have to implement um implicit uh, implicit methods so um you your answer should lies over there now which software is uh, going to be more user friendly for solving the um implicit methods and says nastran uh, and uh, abacus is also be user friendly so that should be your answer now next can be question like when you can use an explicit method um, at what conditions can you give me some example so obviously you can give that when there is a vibration based problem or uh, uh, something like impact based problem there it is going to be a user friendly for an ex explicit method or some maybe problem based on turbulency then you can use a problem based on ex explicit method next question how do you select the type of elements in fea so this element selections are based on uh, different types geometry size or uh, type of analysis so based on the requirement based on the thing you should be having an awareness what sort of geometry next while structural analysis of a complex geometry which meshing will be choose among hexahedral mesh or tetrahedral mesh so you should have a very good knowledge about meshing and the elements of meshing how you can find the materials and for a complex geometry and for simple geometry which will be a user friendly so frequently they ask this sort of questions and i have seen that among my survey majority of the people have uh, said that they should be aware of meshing the type of meshing the fineness of meshing they can do it and uh, and the questions that completely comes on the meshing so obviously if you are aware of this meshing the tetrahedral is going to be the most user friendly among the other one so uh, they have asked another unique thing have you ever faced meshing fail in while analyzing in software and what makes the meshing fail so again this is you can say one of the common questions and uh, among the my survey so you must be aware of this kind of questions that what makes the meshing fail maybe some issues maybe importing maybe not the proper fine elements that you have made sizing choosing of wrong meshing can also create a failure of this thing so you should be aware of that then uh, mostly these questions are asked to aerospace which method will you use to join the wing and the fuselage if how you are going to connect the wing and the fuselage whether you will use welding or revert uh, joint so obviously you are not going to prefer um, welding because welding temperature cannot resist the fine thickness of the material that is being used uh, in the wing and the fuselage right so you are going to use a revert joint in that case so what are the possible happenings if the bird strike on an aircraft this is again um uh, like uh, any layman can answer for the same this questions and uh, likewise i hope uh, you got some clarity that what sort of questions that you may get from this kind of job role and uh, if you are watching this video and any expertise have already faced some more different sort of uh, 
questions so please do let me know in the comment box directly or you can drop me a mail so hope this video is really useful for you and uh, hope you can get yourself prepared and uh, go to the interview and you can definitely crack all the best for your future and stay tuned to my channel fly high